Yay. So thank you all for being here, Threefold United. Um, it is Wednesday, October 6th, and tonight we are lucky enough to be joined with the lovely Sarah Cation. She um, had learned, a, she had shared with me that, about a topic that she had learned, I believe it was in church actually, Sarah, is that correct? And she just felt like it was, it really hit home for her. And she felt like it could be useful for every single person, no matter where you are um, here within Color Street. So I'm going to go ahead and give the mic on over to Sarah. Um, Sarah, before you start, just give a quick, because I don't know if everyone here knows you and the amazingness that is you. Just give us a quick background about who you are, where you live, how long you've been with us and anything else you want to share. Thanks. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I'm Sarah Cation. I've been with Color Street for two years um, this last June, so a little over two years, and I'm a director. And I, um, I'm a mom. I have four kids, two teenagers, two toddlers, and a husband, Jason, who's amazing, and just texted me <laughs> and asked what time we're getting done. It just popped up on there. Um, <laughs> so, what else was I going to tell you? He totally distracted me. Sorry. Uh, for the record, if you see me looking at this angle, it's because I have to have my computer open to actually see everyone. But if I go live on my computer, it is robot mode. So I have to do talking to my phone. Okay. Um, what else? I was a teacher for nine years. I've actually been doing direct sales since I was 19 or 20. <laughs> and uh, I've learned a few things along the way, but yeah, like Lindsay said, I actually heard this little tidbit of info in Bible study last week, and it immediately clicked in my brain as first being really practical to personal life, which is the topic it was brought up in, but then also business and how this can really help you to feel comfortable and happy with your business, even when things might not be going the way you wanted them to or thought they would or planned on. And I really, really like this and just I'm super glad I get to share it with you guys. And it's my hope that it will not only help you out in your business, but also your personal life. So at first I thought to myself, I'm going to just, you know, like I could just teach this on, on the business end of things and tell you think about how this will apply to your personal life as well. And then go, you know, go and do it and leave it at that. But because of the year that we're in <laughs> or the years, the year and a half, however long it's been, I thought I am not going to skip applying this to personal life because um, I'm sure there's nobody here that could say that they don't know someone, if not themselves, who is going through major struggles this year. And it's of all varieties, it's illness, it's death, it's accidents, it's financial, it's jobs, a lot of things. And so I just feel like this could really, really apply to life in general. Okay. Um, oh, here it is. I almost thought I lost it. I had to make a little diagram to show you guys. I know the words will be backwards on it. But um, you will need a pencil and paper. Did you guys grab that? I can't remember if we put that in the little blurb or not. But grab it up because everyone's got their own life and everybody's got their own business. And your list of things for each of these categories I'm going to go through is going to look different from mine. And it's going to look different from Lindsay's and it's going to look different from um, Carrie's and so on. So, and this is going to be like a list that you can maybe even you know, continue to grow and think about as things come up in your life that, or your business that you're feeling frustrated about. Okay, so I'm gonna show you my diagram. And when you make this diagram, you do not need to make this huge, you guys. The diagram itself is just a visual of what we're talking about. I would never try to fit my list into each section of the circle. I'm just gonna, like if I was taking the notes right now, I would write the notes, like the lists, just separate, totally separate from the diagram, okay? So it looks like this. Down here, you have a smaller circle, and it's called the circle of control, okay? And then you have a little bit bigger circle, and that says influence, and then the biggest circle 
says out of your hands or out of my hands. It also is called the circle of concern. I did some Googling. I'll hold this up for a second. <laughs> I did some Googling about this because it was a very, very, very brief thing that came up in the class I was in. And it, there, there is a lot out there, which is really cool. And a lot of them call this outside circle, the circle of concern. So I thought that was cool or applicable, I guess. We don't always have concern about that, but you'll see what I mean in a minute. <laughs> okay, so first thing I wanna talk about is control, that circle of control. And you have maybe heard it said before, control the controllable. And being the emotional creatures that we are, we tend to um, use that energy that we have on all of the things, but by narrowing down your, your circle of control to really looking at a circumstance and seeing what in it is something that you can do. It will really help you to put your energy and focus on your actions. So let's think about if we're making a list for the circle of control. Now the circle of control lists, I actually come up with longer than the others, but I'm sure we could flesh out any section if we really wanted to. But um, I'll go business first, okay? You control, in, in both categories, you control your actions, you control your words, you control your reactions to the things that are going on. And sometimes it takes a little self-discipline, right? We have to really kind of work it to get ourselves to, to control that. Um, and our thoughts too, I would, I would even argue you can control your thoughts. Sometimes they creep in as someone else's thoughts or negative thoughts, or as some of us know the term red light stories. But if we can sit and think about those, we can realize those thoughts aren't always ours and they aren't always true and we can change them too. So business-wise, let's talk about actions. If you're running your, um, your business on Facebook, posting every day, um, make, or giving offers to your VIPs and to your customers, um, asking people questions, you know, asking them if they want to host, asking them if they, you can send them a sample, asking them if they want to, if they've ever thought about being a stylist, um, sending messages, uh, booking parties, goals that you have and setting the goals and working towards the goals, like all the action steps you take, uh, your mindset and what you do for personal development is in your control. Um, sharing the opportunity, business blessing posts, or talking to people about it is in your control. This is an important one that I like to always remind my team of, your budget for your Color Street business. Like, we're not in the business of losing money, right? So nobody should say, oh, this business, like, if they decide to walk away, be like, yeah, they just sucked all my money out of me. Like, nobody is controlling that but you, right? So your budget for your business is all in your control. Um, when you send messages, you cannot control whether or not they reply to you. If you make an offer, a special offer, you cannot control whether or not they say yes, right? So you have to separate what you can do from what you're hoping to get from it, which is not always under your control. There are some things that, you know, we control, like if I, if I'm like, knowing that the bathroom needs to be clean, but I'd rather take a nap, but I decide to go and clean the bathroom, it will get cleaned. Okay, I can control that whole thing 100%. But some of our things like sending out messages, we can't control how they write back because that's in their circle of control, their actions, their thoughts, their emotions are in their circle of control, not ours, okay? Um, your attitude is in your circle of control. So the positivity that you want to shine out, the persona that you want to um, put out on social media, what's the word I'm looking for? You guys know what I mean. Um, emulate, there we go. <laughs> um, the words that you use when you are talking, but also when you are commenting 
on other people's posts, writing your own posts, you know, um, even when you are, if you are get stuck in one of those traps of you're scrolling and you see that post from that person that you can't stand and you just want to say something because you know what's up, <laughs> it's in your circle of control. Okay. So just think, you know, sometimes we really have to think like this is within my control is what I want to put out there going to be a benefit to anyone, including myself, or is it just something to put out there? We have to think about what we can control. If we want a positive result in our life and in our business, we need to be also making sure that what we're putting out there is going to bring back something positive to us as well, or what we're not putting out there. Sometimes we bite our tongue. <laughs> um, the people that you surround yourself with and look up to are within your circle of control. If you have toxic friends, consider a hiatus from them. <laughs> if you have family members that you don't want to unfriend on Facebook, but their posts make you a little crazy, unfollow them. You can still be Facebook friends, but not have to see that, right? You can choose to go and look when you want to, but you don't have to see it all the time. Um, your policies in your VIP group, this one I have to say because I have a customer who really thinks she can run the show sometimes and will not be afraid to let me know if she thinks that I am not doing it the way she would. I'm just like, okay, well, it's my business. So thanks for the feedback. <laughs> so you control, like if you tell your customers this is good through midnight and they don't order until 12 or, you know, 1230 AM. So they don't show up on your, you know, your, your, the right date and then they're upset and you say well the email says 11 59 p.m you know that is your policy and it's up to you if you want to give them some grace and be like oh i get it you know it's all right i'll do it this time or if you want to be like i'm sorry if this was a store and i had a coupon that was only good this day it'd only be good this day so know that that is your control no one else's when you run your business and I even had on the list is work ethic. And if you guys can think of more things for your business and you want to brainstorm them in the chat and just share ideas with each other, because I'm sure that you guys can think of things that I didn't. I just brainstormed these, um, you know, as I kind of was thinking about what to talk about. But that is what you do within your circle of control is going to eventually, if not right away in some circumstances, eventually it will determine your results. But it's focusing on that controlled area. Um, in your personal life, I just go through this really quickly so I don't spend too much time, but um, like I said, I didn't want to skip it because we are in a season, right? It's like a season of trials, right? Um, so I put cleaning is like number one on the list for me because I like to avoid it. <laughs> but then I also like to sit in my house and be like, I wish it was cleaner in here. God, what is going on? Where's the housekeeper? Oh, it's me. Oh, I control that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> calling and messaging your friends and family. So it works in both categories, right? But you have that one friend that you love so much and you haven't talked to them in forever call make the call you control that right you can reach out and hopefully get a hold of them or leave a great message and leave a little joy in their life hoping when they hear that they hear your voice and they smile that's a good thing um, again your budget the words you use what you buy what color you paint your house i would never pick these blues but i'm not repainting this room right now so here we are uh, <laughs> what time you go to bed so that you can be fully rested, um, whether or not you exercise is in your control. We like to say we don't have enough time, but really we can prioritize the time. We can make sure we're not scrolling mindlessly on social media or that we're not watching that TV show for the third episode in a row, you know, like whatever it is, we can control that, right? Um, the food that you eat or whatever it is that you put into your body in general, what you watch, listen to, and read. And I want to emphasize that you control so much of what goes in to you. 
you can change the channel, you can change the station, you can listen to something positive versus something negative. Um, you control that. And garbage in, garbage out, they say. So if you're consuming a lot of negative stuff, you're gonna put out a lot of negative stuff too, and you might not even realize it. And that can affect you personal life and business life too. Um, you can control the amount of time you spend on your screens, your phone, your computer, your tablet, whatever. I um, have really tried to become mindful of that with my little ones because I noticed my four-year-old going, mom, and I'm sending one message on my phone, but I'm like, you know what? To him, I'm just staring at this little gadget, right? Not listening to what he said. And he probably said something ridiculous and it was probably the 15th time he said it, but what message am I sending him? if he doesn't know what I'm doing, he doesn't know if it's work or not. And, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not, I'm not setting an example for him that says that he's important and that he's right here with me right now in the present. And I want to be, I stayed home from teaching to be present with my kids. So keep your goals in mind like that and control what you're doing, what, whatever you can control your actions and such. Okay. Um, the friends you spend time with, again, who you surround yourself with, your own morals, your own beliefs. Um, this is a really good one. We, are, we aren't up for any political debates, but you can control who you vote for. But when you think, you can't necessarily control the, you can't control the outcome, right? You're just, you can control your vote. You cannot control the outcome of the election. And that's another thing that um, it's just super important to remember you, that you can do what you can do, but you can't do everything. Okay, so let's go on to influence, unless anyone had anything right away, any other thoughts or questions. Okay, your circle of influence is outside of your circle of control. And some of the things inside your circle of influence are also in your circle of control, but some of them are not. If anything would be out here, so it's like a Venn diagram, right? Um, influence is exactly what it sounds like. The things in your life that you can have an impact on, you can influence, but you cannot control the outcome or you cannot control what happens with it. And so again, that would be like, um, you can control who you vote for, but you can't control the whole outcome. You just kind of influence it, right? Um, I mean, the whatever. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to go on. Sorry, wrong topic. Get back to business. Um, you can influence your customers. You can give them a special offer. You can write them a message. You can show them appreciation. You cannot control what they do with that or where that takes you, right? Um, same thing with your team. So for those of you who have a team, you can influence them. You can teach them um, to do personal development, to do mindset. You can teach them how to run their VIP. You can teach them how to talk to people and get to know people, build relationships and ask them to host a party, but you can't make them do it. You cannot. So if they don't, stop fretting over it because that's not in your circle of control. So the whole point that you guys are going to see in this is that it's the circle of control that we need to focus on and put our energy on. Not that we won't be at all affected by the other two circles, but if we cannot control it, we need to sometimes educate ourselves on it. Sometimes um, we need to pray on it, but we, we got to let it go too. We cannot put our energy and time into something we cannot control. Um, your sales, same thing, you guys. Some months, you're going to do the same thing you did last month and have half the sales that you did then. I mean, you are not the one at the other end of your website pushing submit on the order for the customers. That's their circle of control. You may say, I ran an amazing party and had $33 in sales. 
and then think it's a failure. First of all, it's not a failure. You ran an amazing party. Your post probably looked great. You probably host coached her the same way you've done everybody else, but you cannot control the minds or bodies of the people who need to go to the website, pick out sets, put in their payment info, and walk away with nail sets. So do not carry that burden on yourself. You influenced as much as you could. You showed it off, you went live, all these things. It's up to them whether or not they're gonna shop, okay? It's up to your hostess whether or not she's gonna show up and be excited. It doesn't matter how much you host coach some people, they just don't get into it <laughs> or totally forget about it. I mean, it happens. Um, so do not carry that. Do not focus so much energy on the disappointment of it. Shake it off, say, hey, I'm glad I did that party. That was, whatever it is, it's over, move on. What can I do next? What's in my circle of control? What can I do next to maybe like if I had, uh, you know, if I had a sales goal, PV goal, and that party set me back a bit, what can I do to make that up? What can I, what can I control? I can offer something else. I can book another party. I can do a battle of the hostesses. I can do a mini mega party. Control it. Uh, prospective stylists, ladies or gentlemen that you've been talking to about the business for a year, two years, a month, and you know that they'd be great, you cannot control when they decide to sign up, you guys. You can, yes, what are you going to try next? All you can do is give them the information, help them see why they need it in their lives, and let them control their own thoughts and actions around it. And you might be hoping and dreaming till you're purple in the face that they're going to say yes and sign up, but that's up to them. You cannot control it. So let, you know, keep them on your list. Tell them you'll follow up later. Move on. What's next? Same thing with your VIPs. Um, same thing with the enthusiasm of others. You might be all fired up about something and can't do anything to get your friend or someone fired up. In your personal life, you can influence your friends and your family. Again, social media is a big tool for that, but what you do in person and on the phone goes a long way too. Um, you can influence your garden. This is a good example. It's like the team one. You can influence your garden, right? You can water it, you can weed it, you can plant the things. Sometimes they just don't grow. That's my garden. <laughs> and other people grow amazing gardens, and I don't know how they do it, but it's obviously some influence I don't have, right? Um, your yard, you can influence your neighbors, uh, you can influence your vehicle, you can try to do all the things to take care of it, but ultimately you can't control if you're going to blow a tire or hit a deer or something, right? Um, you can um, influence why did I put reputation, your reputation? I suppose so. I don't know why I put that under influence. I mean, I guess you can't fully control. I think I knew what I was talking about. You can't fully control your reputation because it involves what other people think of you, which is not under your control, but you can influence it. There, that is, there is a reason I put that one there. <laughs> Same thing with other people's opinions of you. You can influence them, but they're going to think their own thoughts. You cannot control their thoughts, no matter what. Some people will um, think the world of you, and some people will think less. It doesn't doesn't go under your circle of control. You can only do yourself. Your future is something I wrote really big in. Is something you can influence. None of us can completely control our future because life, you know, like that's in bigger hands than ours to know exactly what will happen in our future, but we can influence it. So the decisions we make today, the actions we take today, the conversations we have today can influence where our future goes. Okay. How's the circle of influence looking? Does it look sound good to everybody so far? <laughs> And you guys just go ahead and add on to these lists as you think of things that I don't have here. This is not a, this is not a, you know, covers all of it. And um, I certainly did this quickly. So <laughs> let's talk about what's out of your control. 
and out of your influence and sometimes called the circle of concern. So um, these are the areas that we really, I mean, you guys, you guys get it, I'm sure. We don't have any say in it. <laughs> the, for example, what Color Street Corporate decides for something. If they decide that a set is limited edition and it ran out and they're not going to restock it, that is their decision, right? Or, um, um, you know, like a hostess set. I think that happened last month, right? The hostess exclusive at the very end of the month ran out. And then we all realized it said while supplies last. <laughs> But they told us, you know, and that was in their circle of control. Um, we can't do anything about it. And it does us no good to whine about it or to be mad about it. How can you be mad when you read the fine print and see that it's been there all along, you know? So you got to let it go. You got to be, you just got to say, dang it, that stinks. I didn't see that. Well, onward. You can't control the weather or natural disasters. You can prepare to keep your family safe. Those are actions you can take, right? That's within your circle of control. What you do in reaction to knowing what weather's coming, but you can't change it. Um, gas prices, I don't know. We just gotta keep on buying that stupid stuff, don't we? Um, this is like such a variety, you guys. I really, really brain dumped on this. Um, celebrity lives. Some people get so caught up in what their celebrity people, idols are doing. You can't control it. It's probably not worth the time or energy at all. Just let it go. Let it go. Um, other people's political views. You can't control it, you guys. And if you don't agree with it, that's where you get to choose. What's your action? What's your response? Are you going to not respond? Do you have to respond? You... You can't change what they think, okay? Um, we can't change wars or violence, terrorist threats that are out of our control, right? There's nothing we can do to stop the things that are going on that way. Um, I'm gonna kind of come back to, like, to a blanket statement that kind of covers a lot of this, but um, other people's thoughts and actions, are totally out of your control, somewhat influenced, right? Like I said, when we're talking about our VIPs and we put a dangle, a little carrot in front of their nose and say, hey, buy three, get two today. Ooh, we might influence them a little bit. But for the majority of people's thoughts and actions, we really have no influence or control, right? They are totally them, their own person. Um, sports games results, you can't change it. Not, I mean, you could influence it if you're on the team, but you can't like actually determine how it's gonna go. You can't can't change where you were born. Um, you have no control over that. Um, you cannot, you do not have control over death of a loved one um, or not a, not a loved one, anyone, um, a dear pet. Lindsay, my heart goes out to you. <laughs> um, traffic. Oh, isn't this a good example, you guys? How many times have you been in traffic that's holding you up and you're running late and now you're furious because the traffic is the way it is? But you cannot do anything about it. So this one is one that I have really, I, I started practicing this before I ever heard of these circles. But if you get used to thinking like, oh man, this traffic is bad. And then you just kind of sit back in it and ride it out. You are going to be way less stressed when you get where you're going because you can't change that traffic anyways. You can only change how you react to it. You can control how you react to it. You can control the story you tell yourself in relation to it. And maybe next time you take a different handle of the actions before you got in the car and you get up a little earlier or you leave a little earlier and you control that to try to make it better for the next time. But in that moment, you're stuck in traffic. It is what it is. Um, and a big one here, you guys, your past. You have no control over your past. It's done. It's in the past. You cannot go back and you cannot change any piece of it. And so it's very important that you don't 
dwell on something of the past. Now, this could be business-wise where you're saying like, man, last month, I should have had two more hostesses and I'm really mad that I didn't talk to that one girl. And if only I had done that, I'm sure she would have signed up and I would have had that. Hmm. What good is it do you to sit there and think about that and dwell on it? Zero, like a circle, no good. It does you no good to sit where you are right now in the present and think about what you did or could have done in the past that you didn't do or yeah, you know what I mean? It's not controllable. Sometimes we have to take a hold of something in our past that we struggle with and we have to look at it and go, gosh, that was a different time for me. And what can I do now that shows I have moved on from that time? Maybe you're not that same person anymore. Maybe you would never repeat that thing again. Maybe you would have made that phone call. Whatever it is, you just need to control now in, and into your future what your actions will be. If you have a regret in the past, then your goal now is not to repeat it. And that's what you can control, okay? And that one's a personal one, and that one's a business one a lot of weight on that one okay <laughs> sometimes when it comes to that outside circle the circle that is out the control it's out of our control out of our hands it's called a circle of concern because um that's where a lot of the things that we we put a lot of energy on because i don't know we just like to control things or whatever it is or sometimes they're very emotional things um that is why it's called the circle of concern. I can't remember exactly what I was going for with that, but some of those things in that category, um, for example, like, let me just pull one up here, um, like wars that are going on or threats. Um, sometimes we have to be educated on those things. I'm not saying you turn a blind eye to everything that's out of your control. Sometimes you have to know about it. And sometimes you have to like pray about it but you, if you're going to educate yourself on it, take a little time to do that and then put it away. Because in my life personally, I know some people who spend a lot of time educating themselves on topics right now that are highly, um, you know, argued publicly. And it's like, in my view it's read it's just a repeat of the same things over and over and over and over and then that negativity and the scaredness that comes from focusing on that thing that's totally out of your control drains you and it drains the people around you and it makes life harder and you have to learn to just say okay here's what i need to know about what's going on i need to you know pray on this or whatever you do I am all about the prayer. <laughs> um, and then you need to, to know that it's not in your control and you need to let that go and not put your energy into it. Um, yep, yeah, be educated, pray and get out. That's what I wrote down. Uh, okay, I've got some more stuff for you. You, do not have an unlimited time amount of time in the day or the year or the month and you do not have an unlimited amount of energy you know this because by this time of night you're going oh especially if you've got kids right so when it comes to these circles you guys you only have 24 hours in a day you only have whatever size energy level you have some days it's like this right and some days we feel a little more like this but it's all you've got where are you gonna spend it it is draining to spend like you know how you use your phone and the battery slowly goes down but if you're like watching a movie on netflix on your phone or something your battery's like <laughs> that's what i think the outside circle does to us it doesn't, it's not like, it's not a um, 
slow and steady take of your energy, it's a quick and rapid one. So if you think about something that you know is in your outside circle right now, that out of your control circle, that just the thought of it gives you that little knot that makes you feel anxious or sad or um, worried, you can feel it right there. That's like 5% of your battery just gone. <laughs> So be careful where you spend that energy. It's got to go to what you can control and some even into what you can influence with the knowledge that the influenced things will not always, they're not always in your control. And um, you will come out ahead of the game in comparison to those who are focusing and draining their energy on the outside circle. So. Um, they i found on one website i probably should have written down the source sorry um to that one website when i googled circles of control <laughs> they said proactive people have a small circle of concern so that's that outside one is like barely a rim like an apple peel around the outside imagine that okay they don't spend a lot of time and energy on uncontrollable things if you have to be educated on it, you know, they get educated, they get out. If it's something that they're going to pray about, they pray about it, they give it to God, they get out. Small, apple peel, little outside ring. Reactive people, that was proactive. Reactive people have a large outside ring and a small inside. Um, I forgot to say with the proactive, it's a small outside out of control ring and a big control ring like circle the circle of what they control is big because they've thought about it and they know like this is what i can do reactive have the large circle of concern or out of control they focus a lot of time and energy on things that they cannot change anyways and they have a small circle of control because they are so focused on all these things that they can't control that they don't see what they can control. And that is where we get into a feeling of really being stuck and really being worried and really feeling like everything is going crazy without us, with us. Like we've got nothing, we can't do anything. And you want to have, you want to be the proactive one, right? Like you want to, you want to, this can take practice, you guys, this isn't going to happen overnight, but train your brain when you are thinking on something and you're stuck on it and it's a negative thing think to yourself okay let's really look at this is this something i i can do anything about is there any action i can take that would make this better for me and if there isn't you can let it go what can i do instead okay well i can focus on this or that or you know i can do whatever um when it comes to your business you, what you can control that's that circle will determine your results and you might look at me and go okay sarah you just told us we can influence things but not control them true true yeah some of the things in our business are outside of that circle and they're in the influence circle but if you try something, so that's what you controlled. You controlled your action. I put out an offer for, um, you know, get a get to accents when you place a buy three get one order. Okay, and then they don't take anything from it. You go right back to what you can control, and you say, okay, well, I tried it, so that's a success. It's a success. I successfully put out an offer. It's up to them if they take it or not, right? Now, what can I do next? Maybe, I, you know, I'm going to, I, I'm going to go for like making sure I book another party by Friday, or I'm going to try something else, another offer. Or I'm going to try to do a secret nail sale. Like you keep on going back to what you can control. And in the end, what you control will determine your results. So if one or two or three instances that you, you did, you controlled your action and the results did not work. You come right back again to what you can control. Okay, I can't control that nobody bought from me that time, but here's what I can do next. And you go for it. 
Okay, so that was kind of the last thing I wanted to leave you guys with was just that what you can control will determine your results and what you can control can also greatly determine how you feel about life in general and your business because you are going to start to take your focus off of what you cannot do anything about and come back to what is everything that you do and try is successful if you tried it because you successfully tried it and whether or not they took it is totally out of your control. <laughs> you just influence it, okay? So I think that kind of pretty much wraps up what I wanted to share with you guys and just um, saying that I really hope it helps, not just for your business, but for your personal life too, because I know that there's a lot going on that people are um, fired up about and feel very strongly ab about right now. And consider is it in your control or not and what can you control about it okay thank you sarah that was so good i think um i know i needed it on so many fronts and i know if i needed it i know a lot of you did too so first of all thank you to all of you for hopping on sarah thank you for taking the time to share um the the circle and i think a lot of us like know these things but being told and be, being reminded of it is really helpful, especially right now. Um, as one of your leaders or whatever you want to call me at this point, I get a lot of messages often about people feeling frustrated um, over things, again, that are really out of their control. And it's always a reminder to work our own businesses and focus on what we can. Um, I've had a couple stylists that get super frustrated how we get a very small notice when launches happen. And that is nothing that I can, can change. Um, I am not somebody that Color Street asks for my opinion all the time on how things are run. And I just, you know, have mentioned to her many times that we are all in the same boat. It's equal playing territory here, equal playing field. And we just have to roll with the punches. And if it's something that is going to cause you so much stress and anxiety, if you're going to focus your attention every time when a launch comes out on what short notice you got on it, and that's where you're always going to be looking and not looking at the potential of what this could bring you, then it's not worth your anxiety. You know what I mean? This should always be fun and exciting. And I know sometimes it gets hard. Um, today, I spent a ton of time um, messaging um, people in, within my VIP group about booking parties because I need more parties on my calendar. Um, and I like what Sarah said about you can put out an offer and see if anyone takes it. You know, if you're influencing them enough, but you can't control if they do it. But th think even without, like, if you kind of get a little bit bigger, like maybe you put up a post in your VIP group about an offer, whatever it is, and nobody bit. Could you do or control something a bit more to maybe help influence it elsewhere, like privately messaging people with that offer or new people that maybe aren't are new to your VIP group that don't really know how it works, getting and starting those conversations? Could you send an email about it as well? You know, like kind of hitting all your bases. And I truly feel that if you feel that you have hit all your bases, like if you have with a hostess who's having a party, you did all the things that you always do that you know work and she still doesn't take the bait. She's still not doing what she needs to do to have a successful party. Then you can put your, rest your head easily at night and say, I did everything possible, possibly known to, to man to make this happen. And it didn't work, but I still did it. And it was still a win. Okay, not everything is going to work. So sometimes just putting that aside, I think is so important, both personally and professionally in your, your work here or under your own roof. So um, Sarah, I took a lot of notes. I took, now granted it is a small notepad, but I did take about three pages of notes and I'm gonna be looking back at these. So when all y'all message me about stuff, I can be like, do you remember what Sarah said about the uh, circle of control? Where does this fall? <laughs> How do you feel about it? So, and I know I need to eat my own words with it. So again, thank you all for being here. Um, I hope you all have a great night, Sarah. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us tonight. We are so lucky to have you as part of our team. Rebecca, You're did welcome. you have something to say? 
you can unmute yourself if you'd like. Go ahead. Yes, I did. Um, since it's Three Folds United that's on tonight and we're all in um, network marketing and do personal development, I just wanted to share with you, I know you're not all Facebook friends with me, but if you are, you can share it with other people. It's in my story right now, um, but my friend, um, her name is Abby. She is a direct sales like business coach. That's all she does is help women in network marketing. That's all she does. It doesn't matter like what company you're with, but she'll help you if you need it. But she's starting a podcast tomorrow, a totally free podcast. If anyone is interested, it's called Direct Sales Done Better. Um, you can listen on like Spotify. You can listen on iHeartRadio. You can listen on iTunes. It's on all of them. So if anyone wanted to check it out, it's about like creating your own brand on social media and like how to just do network marketing so it's not spammy um and she does a lot of mindset things as well awesome thank you for sharing that reminded me too if you're part of my team or if you're not on uh, my team right now we we've been trying to do a pd book of the month and kind of reading it together and sharing things this month we're reading f leadership by josh Coates, and it actually is really good especially when it comes to like what we can control and what we can't i mean i just read chapter two today and carrie and i see you nodding did you get did you read chapter two today not yet it has a lot to do with like what we can control with our team and our business and what we can't so if this is a book that you haven't read even if you're not a leader um if you don't consider yourself you are okay i highly recommend this book so far so i just wanted to share that with you guys so, all right. If you guys are all good, thanks again for being here. I hope everyone has an amazing night and uh, I will send this out an email and make sure that your downline gets it if you think it would be helpful for them, okay? All right, bye everyone. We'll see you later. Thanks, Sarah.